The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on? Well, first, a little breaking news. We'll see whether the market reacts to it at all, but the Huawei executive uh, in Canada uh, has been approved for extradition. Uh, looked like they uh, waited until they had a case that was uh, pretty much bulletproof. Um, and unless she's part of a bargaining ship for a uh, trade deal, she's going to jail. Um, at least from what I've read so far. Of course, get into court, maybe it's different, but it certainly looks like the FBI waited until they had literally 10 tons of evidence uh, and uh, went the extra mile, at least from the uh, uh, evidence that they've already provided the courts in uh, Canada. So you know that they got at least most, if not all, the goods on this gal. But the uh, question is, uh, does China just uh, let it roll off? Or do they just start running around uh, arresting U.S. executives in China? I suspect we might see the second part of that. And again, uh, in negotiations, uh, when you have an edge, as the U.S. does, uh, they buy a ton more, uh, we buy a ton more stuff from them than they buy us. They may rattle the cage and tell everybody that uh, they won't buy Boeing planes anymore. So someone else in Europe will buy one or South America. Uh, they've got a long list. Uh, if China decides to go away for a year or so, it's not going to change Boeing at all. Although Boeing's price, uh, stock price may change. I don't think it should. But a lot of people, they run around from day to day thinking that they're, you know, when you've got five years of backlog, literally anything that happens today really going to change the outlook for Boeing anytime soon. Anyway, uh, we'll look for a little trade stuff out here, but so far the markets, at least uh, from what I can tell, haven't changed uh, much in what they're looking at. Um, we've seen a big change in the market this week, at least in character. Uh, we've seen selling at lunch, uh, and I think uh, that is one of the things that's starting to make me think that um, kind of a theory that... Uh, I kind of came up with yesterday, and that is that maybe there's enough selling in those five or six massively confiscatorially high tax states um, that they're going to have to do because they've got, you know, taxes of eight, 10 percent in Illinois and California, New York, some others, New Jersey. Where are they going to get that cash? They're going to need to raise it. And if they haven't already started, my guess is that some of this stuff's going to be for sale so that they can raise and pay their taxes uh, over the next month or so. Uh, we saw a huge move in 2000. That was because of uh, a change in taxes. Everybody waited until the first day of 2000, first trading day of 2000, to sell because it was 15% cheaper on the taxes. Um, I'm wondering if this won't be another unintended consequence, and that is, uh, will it matter long term? I mean, in a year? No. Uh, there's a few other things going on that makes me go, hmm. Uh, that is a kind of a fairly decent weakness in uh, foreign markets, although those markets probably as strong as uh, Asia was should have been up um, all day. They kind of are out. Uh, REITs also are telling me that after the news this morning that uh, the thought that interest rates are going down, we also saw gold move. 
uh, that uh, interest rates are going down, probably not a a uh, real thing. I think at best we can hope that the next year has no rate increases, and as long as the data comes in as as good as it has been, maybe not a lot of change to the bond policy either. Uh, certainly, those REITs are telling me that that there probably aren't lower rates coming for those folks that want to uh, find a bigger fool to buy their strip mall or mall or retail building. Doesn't look like the REITs have a lot of problems in the uh, traditional home business, single family dwellings, but it does look like a lot of the, uh, the things that I'm looking at, just, you know, if you're going to sell a mall, someone's going to have to buy it and they're going to finance it. And if that interest rate comes down, then maybe the mall's worth more money. But, uh, you know, from strip malls that I see down here, and we're fairly busy, um, and rental prices uh, certainly have gone down. And I talked to a few people around here. But at the same time, lots of people moving here. But if you've got Amazon, and you've got Costco and the Sam's, and you've got a Walmart and a Target, I don't know how much you really need those strip malls, maybe to get your hair cut, maybe to park in when the overflow from Lowe's and Home Depot's a little bit much, like me on a Saturday. I'll park over there where they're not going to run into my car. Um, just a lot of thoughts right now, but uh, there's certainly something going on that I'm not really getting a, a full uh, read on in the market. Um, now, we popped higher gave a lot of it back, and then we went right back into the mode that we've seen every day, which is the market just ticks up a hundredth of a point in the S&P cash, or maybe a tenth of a point, and it just kind of just keeps pushing up higher. But you know what? The volume all falls out. And then at the end of the day, everybody's a big seller. We saw that yesterday. We saw that a couple of days ago. So is the market falling apart? No. But we continue to be in a market that is very uh, problematic for me. One, very few shorts. When we look at the call ratio over the last few days, we've had a little bit of a push, but nothing that would say that we have people uh, going all in short. When we look at some of the other stocks that um, are uh, generally being highly shorted, eh, you got a few of them, but it's not as bad as it has been. So we got a lot of people, I think they're all thinking the same thing. And that is, you know, there's going to be a trade deal. I'm going to sell the pop in the trade deal. Now, I'll give you a different scenario. And that is, uh, by Monday, um, China starts rattling some sabers on the trade deal. And the whole market starts to look south. I may, that may be why we're looking at the emerging markets being uh, much weaker over the last couple of days. Uh, than the U.S. markets, and that is that, uh, as I've seen many times, when the U.S. gets a cold, the third world gets Ebola, and uh, eh, just a few thoughts out there. When we come back, we'll do a little bit of snooze, and uh, we'll see. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're just a point under 2,800 on the uh, S&P cash. Uh, volume was pretty good earlier in the morning. Been um, like about the last four days, which has been eh, after 1 and before 3.30, uh, kind of a ghost town. All the volume coming in at kind of the end of the day and selling coming in at the end of the day. That tells you what the pros are doing, at least in the short term. Uh, 4.8 billion shares as we go into the second segment here, that's compared to about 8.5 billion shares yesterday. We're going to have much lighter volume than we had yesterday. Did push down, did have more volume yesterday. We pop, and again, you get these things where they just kind of turn the temperature up a little bit uh, over a set of hours, and then it comes back down fairly quick as it did. We do have fun buying starting on Monday, uh, and there will probably be some markups on that question is just whether or not we have truly flow inflows this month. And uh, the question is, we may not from uh, some of the people that I look at. Uh, we've got a little history to do, then we'll get into some questions. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in uh, 1976, Steve Wozniak completes the basic design for the circuit board of an easy-to-use personal computer. The next day, he shows it to Homebrew Computer Club, which Steve Jobs attends. Jobs realizes the potential and convinces Wozniak not to give away the schematics, but instead produce a printed circuit board to sell. The two Steves form a company, and they name it Apple. And Wozniak's design becomes the basis of the Apple One computer, and the rest, as they say, is history. And, of course, uh, I'll say that uh, that uh, why... Steve Jobs was an excellent marketer, but uh, neither one of them would probably be stand. Well, he once did, but I don't think any of them would have made the history uh, had not Wozniak come up with, at the time, a very brilliant design to keep pricing low and make it uh, usable for somebody, actually. And, of course, uh, eventually you could say that they didn't really do anything or make any money until about 1980, um, 79. Uh, and the key to it had nothing to do with them for the most part. It was that someone made a product called a spreadsheet. And tons of MBAs were coming out of college. They all bought spreadsheets and they bought uh, spreadsheet software and bought Apple to 
PCs, and that's what made the company viable. And um, bringing enough money, they could build the Mac, get a laser printer, uh, get some desktop publishing software, all of which they didn't build or design. Um, the killer app a lot of times comes right out of left field. They didn't know about the spreadsheet, and they didn't know about desktop publishing until really someone else brought it in from outside. So uh, the beginning of Apple is really a lot of comical errors to success. In fact, there's a book out called, uh, I'm going to think the, the end of it, it's by uh, Kringley X, uh, da, 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 da. Accidental Empires. Um, yeah, VisiCalc, uh, the killer app. Um, anyway, um, success a lot of times a lot more luck than a lot of people would say. But uh, on this day in 1976, uh, for the people not lucky today, we'll give them the loser horn. And that is Tesla. Tesla down fairly strongly, down 26 bucks. Uh, question about whether or not they had a debt payment due. Uh, if the stock price was below, I think it was about 380, uh, then the people could take a uh, rather large sum. Uh, I think um, it, it would have been about the equal of the close yesterday. So let's say it closed at 318 and that's 380. So the interest was about 20 bucks per hundred or about 20%. Uh, so that loan was, uh, eh, you can say uh, Shylocks probably have lower interest rates than what Tesla had. They were betting that they would have that stock through the roof, uh, but uh, man, they still had to pay 920 million shares or dollars. And of course, um, over the last couple of days of last week, uh, Elon Musk was hawking everything uh, that was around him, all his houses, five different houses, raised $100 million in cash. question is whether or not where that cash went. It, did he have to come up with that to actually get them across the uh, line for that $920 million? He said that it's been paid, um, or at least uh, intimated that in, the, uh, in a call last night after uh, about 5.30 last night. Uh, and, of course, had been building up a huge uh, announcement. And that announcement is that they're going to be selling a car that they were selling last year. And that is a one with limited range and lower prices. Roll-up windows, all the uh, fancy stuff pulled out. Uh, and, the, and, of course, they're going to be closing a great deal of, uh, in fact, all of their showrooms that they've had at malls and things like that around the country. Supposedly, they're going to be selling this thing at about $35,000 to start. So you got to figure $38,000 with a few add-ons. Uh, I still suspect that if I was going to buy an entry-level vehicle, I would still get the Kona uh, from Hyundai. That one, at about that price, maybe even a little less, uh, has about 400-mile range and has all the features. So, again, I don't think that Tesla makes a bad product. Um, I just think that they're going to be and seeing a lot of uh, uh, competition come in uh, this uh, year, and it's going to be problematic. So uh, we will uh, continue on. Well, we've broken 2,800 very, very quietly. Again, moving the S&P not in points, but in hundreds and tenths of points slowly, slowly, slowly up into the close. And again, you get this kind of markup period in the market, you kind of have to watch it fairly closely. Uh, but the question is whether or not we'll actually have anybody uh, bite um, next week. And again, like I said, I see a lot of problems with light volume. We'll be talking about that again through the rest of the show. Uh, da, 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 what if they did an iPhone? Tesla? Who knows? Uh, anyway, uh, Musk, uh, the question you always have to think is whether or not the SEC uh, actually tosses him out. Um, there's some discussion, kind of like the movie Casino, 
that he will get a new job, job title, actually be the CEO, uh, but not have the CEO position. Kind of like uh, the leading character in that movie where he couldn't actually run the casino, but he did. And everybody knew it and didn't pay any attention to um, the guy that actually was the CEO of it because he was the CEO and know him only. The other guy could call a guy who would kill you. And that's all that mattered. Um, the question is whether or not the SEC will even allow him to do that. Uh, but again, a long history of over-promising and under-delivering. Um, a decent car. Uh, some other things going on. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. We'll get into some charts. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I'm trying to get an email out here during the break, so we'll do that. Uh, question coming across the, uh, uh, okay, if the interest rates go down for the price of the shopping center goes up because the return goes up, buyer's financing provided by economic mood is positive, if neutral or negative, people stay on the sidelines. For some reason, they have to buy. Many centers now, even in the tens of millions of dollars, are bought cash. Hmm. Huh. He's a 
commercial real estate advisor. Doesn't say where he's at. Oh, he's uh, in uh, Las Vegas. I think that's probably more of a issue with you. Maybe the what I'm looking at is what's happening here in Florida, which uh, at least from the people I've talked to aren't done in cash. So maybe it's a little bit more of my uh, inside. When you got a hot town like Nevada, uh, like Las Vegas, where everybody's uh, leaving from uh, L.A. Uh, in droves, you, know, you might have a, a much bigger boom town than we have. Uh, people kind of come in all over it. Um, interest rates go down. Yeah, the price goes up for a shopping center. Goes up as return goes up. Buyers find if the buyers financing. Okay. So no real question there. Got a question about IBB. Question is, uh, IBB still going up this move? Have any more to go? Get uh, some good earnings calls and a few products push. But again, you want something in a two, two and a half million share. You got about 1.1 million shares today. So yeah, can you creep up for the next couple of days? My guess is that by Wednesday, uh, all fund buying will over. And if you continue to see the ridiculously light uh, volumes that we've seen, um, that would be, you know, something that you'd want to to uh, think about. But yeah, the next, I think if you don't have a position that's paying off right now, you're probably looking at uh, uh, if the volume uh, remains to be uh, pathetic and abysmal, as it has been on a lot of these stocks, uh, that you're looking for uh, probably Wednesday and fund buying to come off. Um, I was going to show this earlier. Uh, to, 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 where is it at? There it is. Um, options uh, folk, option market makers still want nothing to do with this market, which is fairly interesting. Um, now, they think that, you know, <laughs> we could go up 100 points and it wouldn't make much difference to them on the, eight, was it 18th or 15th this month? It's the 15th of this month for options expiration. Uh, at the same time, you could go down um, massively three or 400 points and it doesn't actually, it, it'll make a little difference to them, but not as much as you would think. Um, so they continue to look at the market kind of like me, which is a little higher, probably 60% chance or 70% chance that, you know, you go up 10, 20 points on the S&P cash and or uh, a smaller chance you go down significantly. And I mean 100 or 200 points. So the risk reward uh, to the upside, probably pretty narrow. Uh, but... Uh, We'll consider that the next couple of days might find it. In fact, I'm seeing some stocks out there just with miserably light volume, and I'm short them, and I think, you know, it's not like I'm getting blown out or anything. I just think that I did tick, uh, leave the winners on, uh, which we had a couple of them that are really looking fairly good. Uh, take the ones that are uh, off a little bit and get out of the market. So, you know, we'll see on Monday and Tuesday. But my guess is if we don't have much of anything happen by Wednesday, uh, the market's probably ready to roll back over again. Uh, let's see what else we have going on here. Uh, da -da -da. No, I don't want to have my car towed. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else do we have going on here? Oh, wanted to look at a few of the other stocks that we had been looking at uh, this week and see if anything really has happened with them. I think we were really talking about uh, the 26th, when a lot of these that were hitting highs um, and coming over. Um, Adobe's kind of interesting. It's slowly, you had kind of a doji yesterday. You got kind of a doji out here today so far with almost no volume, 1.2 million shares. But again, I suspect they're marking this up uh, for funds on Monday and Tuesday. So you still may see a little bit more out here in Adobe. Um, although there's no juice as you get up to those highs. Uh, AVT, which is uh, Avnet, Hamilton Avnet, 
we talked about this one. It's already failed and failed fairly significantly. But without the market going down, it can probably hang a little high. Uh, the ones that have already failed come up a little bit and then pull down. Generally, that's where the big destruction comes. Avnet is an um, electronics parts supplier in the uh, North America. Uh, but uh, the December 3rd high at 44.97 uh, got uh, taken out by about a buck on February 25th. Uh, did so with just half the volume. Now you've pulled back a little bit. My guess is you get back up to maybe 45. And if that pulls back after hitting 45, back down under 44, it's probably coming back down to the low 41s. To two. You can give me a call, 877-927-6648. You can email me at pathtfnn.com. And uh, what else is going on out here? Okay, I know about that. I know about that. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, Tom O'Brien at 3.30 and uh, talking what it went on in technology this week. But we shall see. Okay. Uh, to to uh, AstraZeneca, uh, like I said, there isn't much left in these. Uh, if you want to, I, I kind of feel like going long here uh, is probably going to pay off, but it's not going to pay off that much. And in uh, parlance of Wall Street, it's trying to pick up dollars in the way of a steamroller. We may pop up a little bit, but that may just give you an opportunity to short uh, some of these stocks at just a slightly higher price. November 13th. $41.78 on AstraZeneca. That was 9 million shares. Uh, broke it with 4.5 million shares on the 27th. Gap down, you're up a little bit here. And this is where um, a lot of these stocks, once they start breaking uh, below either a nine day or a, well, let's change it to a nine day so you can actually see here, traditional moving average. Uh, if they start breaking below that nine day average is where these things are going to fall off because they've been on a ballistic move higher. And uh, that looks like it could set up just in another day or two. Uh, Casey, General Store, uh, actually gave a fairly decent sell signal if it closes below its nine day today. Uh, you had a test of a previous high on half the volume. You've pulled back down. You closed below that nine day yesterday. You're going to close down below it today. So, uh, and. A lot of these stocks, man, they're just hanging out here. We'll uh, see what happens first couple of days next week. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And what else do we have going on? Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm, man, getting a lot of stuff. Um, question about uh, DDD on earnings. And yeah, it came down uh, fairly strongly. Um, again, a lot of these setups here just don't make me feel real good. Uh, this thing ran a lot of folks uh, into earnings last night. But it gapped down on um, October 31st with uh, 18 and a half million shares, went up through that with 3 million shares yesterday. And again, from uh, stocks like uh, Tesla going into earnings, you know, we've got just as many of them blowing up as we do going higher. So it's more of a crapshoot uh, in a great deal of these. But in this one, uh, they're changing their business plan, which I wrote something for the Tech Insider maybe two years ago. Uh, on how these guys would eventually end up making money, and that's going to uh, the materials or materials that they can actually make money on. Selling plastic, probably not going to be a big business, uh, but selling uh, a technologically engineered uh, titanium or certain kinds of metals and actually building those uh, devices that actually can crank them out at a fairly decent speed, whole different other thing. Um, but, uh, that's basically what they're saying. And of course, anytime you change your business plan, uh, the market doesn't like it because that means it probably wouldn't work in to begin with. Probably the same reason why Tesla's down. You change something that probably means it wasn't working. Uh, you don't change stuff that's working beautifully. So anyway, it's just back down to this gap up that went, uh, the January 29th, but, uh, that had 4.6 million shares and you're into it with 6 million shares, so somewhere around um, 11, 10 bucks, this thing probably will flatten out. Uh, to do, let's see if we have any other emails here as we go through all this, because I know I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, there we go. Uh, can, assessment of Apple. Um, okay. Um, I mean, it just looks like the rest of this stuff. It came back up on light volume. You've just been slowly kind of roasting shorts on this. I don't see anything really changing. Um, Sprint's rolling out their 5G um, phones in our uh, system, and we're going to talk about that on the Tech Insider today. Uh, but I think that's going to be in May, maybe April, May. And they don't have any phones. I don't think it's going to be a great six months uh, or nine months until 2020 when they actually have a 5G phone, and uh, Samsung does have a 5G phone. They will be crowing about that a great deal. Um, I've always thought that this thing probably wanted to come back to a 160 level, and after the next couple of days, if you don't see anything really come into this, I suspect that Apple is going back uh, to that 160 level. Um, Question about uh, what are these high-tech jobs at Amazon? I think just another retailer 
like Walmart, please talk about these so-called high, uh, uh, high jobs. Electric cars, da, 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 hybrid is the way to go. All electric's bad and hot, cold weather. Hybrid is uh, great all the time. Small engine with supercapacitors is the way to go for me. Yeah, not a bad idea. Um, first of all, what are all the high-tech jobs at Amazon? Um, these are uh, uh, buyers and managers of all the different divisions. These you got to remember, Amazon is literally into everything. You got people into uh, uh, the aviation business and transportations and logistics. Uh, Amazon's more like the army. Uh, if you need uh, you need somebody to give M16s out people, you also need uh, people to have big howitzers. And uh, some people actually have atomic bombs. Uh, this is a big, huge thing. And there are a lot of high price managers in all those different positions, um, including things like Amazon Web Services and sales and everything. I mean, it's a huge company for a reason. It also is a huge company on fairly light margins. I mean, most of their stuff is fairly low, 6 10% margin. It's not uh, Apple with a 60% margin or Intel. And uh, they need to have a lot of people watching that stuff very closely because uh, when you're working on next to no margin, uh, it's worth paying somebody 150 grand a year to make sure that you don't lose 5 million. And that's basically the way where those high tech, I, I wouldn't say high tech jobs, I would say high paying jobs is what New York has been looking for 150 grand a year, which is kind of like 30 grand down here in Florida. But uh, that's it. Electric cars, working in this field, uh, hybrids, the way to go. Um, I would say it depends on where you live. If I lived up north, I wouldn't have an electric car. Uh, in fact, there was a big uh, thing from AAA out about a week ago, maybe 10 days ago, talking about how many uh, battery packs died in the great freeze when the power was off in these various cities that lost power. Uh, if you don't know it, if you buy an EV and it's very hot outside or it's very uh, cold, uh, it will run the uh, heater or air conditioning for those batteries in the car. Like Tesla, you'll walk by one and if it's you know, like 115 degrees out, it will be doing, it'll be sitting there running, uh, trying to keep those batteries within a certain temperature range. Same thing at the airport. People that don't know what they have will go uh, leave their Tesla there. They'll get a cold snap and come back, and the batteries will be totally dead and, of course, frozen at the same time, and uh, you're looking at another $20,000 battery pack. The economics are fairly interesting on EVs, and that is uh, you'll spend about $400 on electricity compared to about two grand a year on gasoline for the average driver. The downside is that you got, uh, in 10 years or eight years, you're replacing that $20,000 battery pack. That engine that came in the regular gas car, still working fine. So it's a little bit of uh, pay up front or pay later, but I'll guarantee you that in eight years, the battery packs of these cars will probably be fairly worthless. They do a lot of engineering to get them uh, better than the four or five years that they were out there. Um, and certainly uh, supercapacitors, if they can get the kind of density they need ever, uh, are the most, uh, would instantly change the market overnight. Just no one's been able to do that yet. Supercapacitors, uh, you can store electricity chemically like a battery or statically, like when you used to rub your feet across the carpet and go over there and zap your, your uh, siblings and zap them with the old static. Uh, and that's what capacitors do. They kind of statically hold electricity. You can also hold it in a coil but uh, you can't do enough of that to actually matter. That's magnetically uh, set up um, electric electricity. But anyway, supercapacitors, uh, the dream of the future, and if anybody comes along with that, uh, Tesla actually bought the only public company out uh, um, a couple weeks ago. But again, at the price they bought them out for, doesn't sound like they actually had a solution. So that was Maxwell. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute to close that up.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, real question about Microsoft. It's up on 13 million shares now. That's just underneath uh, two previous highs at about 35 million shares and 115.72 at 71 million shares. I thought that it would come back down here on light volume and test the actual 98 level first. Uh, it actually went higher uh, on very light volume into this high. And if you continue to attack that 115.72 high, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, as they push the market for uh, fund buying, that may be a, a big signal uh, that the strongest stock can't get any volume above this uh, or these previous highs. Some of the other big wigs of, of uh, tech uh, testing previous highs, Oracle actually had some decent volume back into uh, uh, its $53 high, just hasn't been able to get any juice to go higher. Again, a lot of these stocks all kind of saying the same thing. Uh, if you're into the semiconductor space, Taiwan Semiconductor banging against uh, these areas around 40 bucks. Didn't have enough volume and retraced. In fact, actually got into it with about half the volume of that uh, November 2nd high on Taiwan Semi. You're up today, but again, uh, I would not be going long here. I don't think that, you know, if you make some money, it's going to be small. If something blows up on you, it's going to be big. The risk reward for being long. Um, pretty weak right now. 
Uh, you'd much rather see a pull back with light volume if you want to go long. Anyway, we're at 2802 on the S&P cash. Volume's been kind of light uh, after we pushed off those lows. About 5.3 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. That compares to about 8.5 billion shares. So we'll see how the volume comes in the last part of the day. Fun buying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we're on to the uh, rest of the show for March. We'll be uh, back at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien. We'll be talking technology. I don't hear any music. Come on, bring it up. Everyone's so starting to hear it. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you Monday, same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.